We're breaking down the cardiac cycle, making it easier than ever. We've looked at it as a whole in my previous video, and you can check that one out for an overview, but we're gonna dive into it in a lot more detail. And by the end of this series, you'll not only be able to ace any tests on the cardiac cycle, it's also gonna bring together a bunch of other cardiovascular concepts. So let's do this. As a reminder, when we're talking about the cardiac cycle, what I'm really talking about is everything that happens from the beginning of one heartbeat to the beginning of the next. So the heartbeats, lub dub, lub dub, we're talking about a single lub dub. Make sense? All right. Well, there's actually a lot of stuff happening here and I want you to understand it fully. So much that I created a free guide that you can download to help you solidify the concepts. You can click on the link in the description to get that. Now, we're gonna start by looking at the first phase of the cardiac cycle and that's called atrial systole. The term atrial systole has two parts. Atrial, which refers to the atria of the heart, and systole, which means contraction. So we're talking about the contraction of the atria. So far, so good. Let's look at where things are right before the atria begin to contract, just to set the scene. Blood is coming back to the heart. On the right side, we have blood coming back from the rest of the body. And on the left side, we have blood coming back from the lungs. And to start off the cardiac cycle, the atria are gonna contract. Now the question is, what needs to happen in order for the atria to contract? Well, contraction doesn't just happen on its own. We need some kind of signal to cause it to happen. And fortunately, we have such a signal coming from the pacemaker that's in the heart. In the right atria, that's where we find the pacemaker, aka the SA node, which stands for sinoatrial node. Now, the SA node generates a signal, and since the SA node is located in the right atrium, that signal starts right there, and it spreads throughout the rest of the atria. So when we look at the electrocardiogram, what we're gonna see is we have a P wave. Now, that P wave shows the depolarization of the atria. In other words, it's showing you the spread of the signal across the atria. Now, we have a signal, and that signal is gonna cause the atria to contract, which is atrial systole. Now, when the atria contract, what do you think that's gonna do to the pressure in the atria? Well, think about it this way. If you have a container with fluid, or even like lotion, and you squeeze it, what do you expect to happen? Well, the squeezing, what it does is it increases the pressure in the container and that pushes whatever is inside out. Well, when the atria contracts, that's basically like you're squeezing the atria and the squeezing increases the pressure in the atria and that's gonna push the blood through the valves into the ventricles. Now, the name of these valves are like super easy to remember. They're between the atria and the ventricles, so we call them the atrioventricular valves. Man, if only everything in biology were named that simply, that would be awesome. But anyways, this brings the last bit of blood into the ventricles. Ventricles. In fact, about 25% of the volume of the blood in the ventricles comes from this last push from the atria contracting. Now, when we look at the pressure in both the atria and ventricles, you can see that it's pretty low. I mean, it was pretty close to zero millimeters of mercury. The increase in pressure that we see isn't huge. If you think about it, the atria don't have as much work to do as the ventricles. They are sending the blood a very short distance. So they just have to send blood to the ventricles and they're like right next door. And when you compare what they do to what the ventricles do, you'll notice that the ventricles are much stronger. So when they contract, the increase in pressure is gonna be significantly more, and you'll see that in the next video. For now, I want you to know that there's a little bump in pressure as a result of the atria contracting to send blood into the ventricle. And that little bump is gonna be seen in the atria as well as the ventricles. There's one more thing I wanna point out here. Now we've got all the blood in the ventricles that we're gonna have in the ventricles. There's no more coming. And what we've looked at so far happens right before the ventricles contract. So the ventricles are in their relaxed state getting ready to do what they do, contract so that it can send blood throughout the body. The amount of blood inside the ventricles at this point is called the end diastolic volume. That's the amount of blood that's present at the end of diastole. 
And the word diastole refers to relaxation of the muscle. Systole refers to contraction, and diastole refers to relaxation. I'm telling you this now because that's going to come back up in a later video when we talk about stroke volume. You don't have to understand that yet, but stay tuned. But we've discussed all the major things that happen during atrial systole. And now, to test your understanding, let's do it. If you understand the summary that I'm going to give next, then you're ready for any test on this section. So here goes. The first phase of the cardiac cycle is atrial systole. When looking at the electrocardiogram, the P wave shows us the depolarization of the atria. After atrial depolarization, we get atrial contraction. Now, when the atria contract, that increases the pressure in the atria and pushes the last bit of blood into the ventricles. We'll also see a bit of a bump in the pressure in the ventricles. And now we have all the blood in the ventricles that we're gonna have, which gives us the end diastolic volume. We're now ready for the ventricles to contract and send that blood throughout the body. Man, that was a lot of big words there, <laughs> but I hope you got it. If you did get it, type in the comments below. Leslie, I get it. I love seeing your feedback. And don't forget to get my free guide to the cardiac cycle, which will be linked up in the description below. Now in the next video, we're gonna dive into the next phase of the cardiac cycle, isovolumetric ventricular contraction. I'll see you over there. Peace.